Christian cults. That's right. I'm a Muslim and I want to talk about Christian cults. And the reason I want to is because one, I want to help that Muslim who has been in a similar situation and just say, hmm, someone understands. Two, I want to help a Christian who may be in a Christian cult and maybe help that person recognize that they may be in a Christian cult. Not to become Muslim, not to not be Christian, but just recognize maybe it's not the best. Maybe, maybe not. And three is for Muslims in general to say, don't judge other Muslims for why they think or believe or do or don't do certain things, especially if that Muslim is a convert. And I'm going to target American Muslims. And that's where this will probably unfold. I don't know where this video is going and I have not thought about this experience for a long, long, long time. So probably at least 30 years ago, I was in a Christian cult. I don't know how old I was. I might have been 19, going on 20, or around that age. That's usually when you get involved in something like that. And you go full force. So, I grew up as a Christian. My parents were not religious, but they were Christians. And my mom was definitely a Christian, Christian, but not religious, not a Bible thumper. And then at 12, my oldest brother got saved and became a hardcore Christian and is still a hardcore Christian. I'm the kindest person I know, truly, and he's a Christian. And I'm a Muslim, and I'm saying that about a Christian. But when I got around 19, 20 years old, I got involved in a small Christian church. And it was very similar to the church I used to go to when I was 12 to about 18 years old. But I didn't know it was a cult. Now, some would disagree and say it's not a cult because it has the label Christianity. And it was a Pentecostal type of church where you clap your hands, stop your feet, speak in tongues, heal. People prophesied over you. Fast. I used to fast for three days straight. And then at the end of that three days, people would prophesy over you and tell you what you should do for your future and all this and all that. And it kind of had a lock on my mind. That's what a cult does. It puts you in this prison in a way. But I was still a rational person. I had a mom at home who was very rational. So I had a safe haven, which helped me leave this cult. 
Now, it might have been only 10 months. I don't even think it was a year. But when something like that happens, it feels way longer and it's a big, big, big deal in how you live your life after. So I started unraveling from this because I was always skeptical. I always thought, hmm, I don't know about this. But I was in it at the same time. I had both of those feelings. And I could tell you a lot of details about speaking in tongues and having people slay you in the spirit and all that stuff. But I want to talk about the last thing that allowed me to accidentally break from it. I was supposed to be at church on a Saturday for something. And I called in the night before because I wanted to go to Bush Gardens. It's a amusement park, huge. And me and my girlfriend at the time went. I didn't think anything about it. I had to do something on that Saturday for the church, but if you know anything about church, you're volunteering. And I just called in and said, I can't do it. And on that Sunday, <laughs> looking back is so stupid, but on that Sunday, I was called up to the front of the church and chastised in front of everyone. And I was trying to fit into this community and I got chastised. And I didn't grow up like that at all. I grew up in a rough type of way where who the hell are you talking to like that? But I wouldn't even say hell. I would probably say the F word. And my wife told me, make sure I don't curse on the videos. I do curse, but I try not to curse on the videos. I don't curse, curse all the time, but I do curse. Um, and when the pastor did that in front of everyone, I took it. And that wasn't me. And I didn't go back. And I remember some of the people asking me to come back. And I'm like, no way. No way. But that broke me out of it. Because he stepped over his boundary. He thought I was probably like someone else who would take that and be like oh. so why am I sharing this like I said in the beginning I want to help Muslims understand that a convert may be coming in the religion with this type of baggage and born and raised Muslims as well, they have their baggage too, but I can only speak for a convert who was in a situation like that. And when I come in to Islam and try to fit in and people are talking about this sort of hierarchy of scholars and so on and so forth it doesn't sit too well for me but other convert Muslims who have been in that same situation and just in general you want to be careful of how you approach a Christian or an ex-Christian who is a convert just in general even if they were not in a cult like I was. Let's say I wasn't even in a cult. And again, some may say that wasn't a cult. Maybe. 
but I know it had a lock on me. It had a lock on my brain. But say I wasn't even in that specific church and I was that fundamentalist, charismatic, uh, Pentecostal Christian from 12 to 18 and I was not even in that church specifically because there's a lot of Pentecostal Christians who leave Christianity and they may look into Islam but they are leaving a religion that they purposely left that told them to worship a prophet and most likely that is one reason they left they do not believe that Jesus is God and they should not follow Jesus and then they come into this community of Muslims after they accepted the confirmation there's no deity but capital G God and Muhammad is God's messenger and to that or to them that speaks and then they get around these Muslims who focus on a prophet prophet Muhammad and like it or not a lot of Muslims are focused on prophet Muhammad telling Christians who followed a prophet and left a religion because they followed a prophet as God to follow this prophet now of course as Muslims we know you don't follow prophet Muhammad as God but this Christian is coming in and you are focusing on a prophet more than God now I know we don't want to say oh that's not how it really is or we don't really do that no I know you can't say you don't do it because I've seen it I've been in it and it turns these converts off and they end up leaving the religion they hang in there for a while because they still connect to that confirmation that there's no deity but capital G God and Muhammad is his messenger and then they get this focus on Prophet Muhammad and I'm not saying it shouldn't be that way but for a new Muslim coming in with that background you have to know who that person is that's what I'm saying and that might be a reason a lot of converts leave within a few years do you know that convert and their background or are you just throwing stuff on them because that's the way it was done to you and as a born and raised Muslim you may not even understand a convert who has that baggage and as a convert yourself you may not understand it as well but there are a lot of converts who come in who have a Christian background and it might not even be a strict Christian background it might be a very modest laid-back liberal Christian background but they still are not following that Christian background and guess what that Christian background tells them that Jesus is God and now they're going to a religion where the Muslims are saying now follow this prophet instead of that prophet and again I know that's not how it is I'm very well or can't speak I'm very aware of that but I'm talking about that new convert and how you need to approach that new convert you have to understand who that person is even today with that 
background of that Christian cult that I was a part of, it still affects me today. That's why when someone says, oh, scholar so-and-so said this, I'm like, and? Today. And Muslims think I'm bucking the system when I have a background that says, be cautious. I just want God. Or this Hadith says this, and it's authentic because of this, 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 and this. I get it. I understand it. But, and? I mean, I don't follow, for example, the, the five pillars, just for example, and try to follow them. I don't follow them perfectly, but for example, I believe for me as a Muslim, I should do the five prayers that you do five times a day. But I don't do it because scholar so-and-so says you should do it this way. And I don't do it because it's Sunnah or because the Hadith supports this and that. I don't do it for that reason. I do it because it makes sense to do it. My relationship is between me and God. And I see those prayers as something that says to me, man, that makes sense. Let me do that. I don't need an intermediary. I don't need something between me and God to tell me what I should do. And I'm sharing this because that is how you keep someone like me who used to be a hardcore Christian Muslim. And I know Muslims don't like it. How dare you accept the five times of day prayers and just accept it because it makes sense to you without having it be taught to you to make you do it. I don't even know if that makes sense. But in other words, I follow what makes sense to me. When something don't make sense, I don't care if it's a Hadith, a scholar, I don't care if it's a specific educated imam. If it don't make sense, it don't make sense. And that comes from that background. Even a specific verse in the Quran, I may look at it and be like, hmm, I don't know if I agree with that interpretation. It's not that I don't think the Quran is correct. I might not think that interpretation is correct. And this is very important to share because Christians or ex-Christians are coming into the religion of Islam and we're losing them because we are not fostering that person. We're not fostering who they are. We're not understanding who they are. We're not getting to know the individual. We have this blanket way of how we think all Muslims should act and think and believe and do. Let me tell you, Americans in general, you tell American or an American to do something because if not, It's instilled in an American to buck that. Don't tell me what to do just because. Even if it's the threat of hell. <laughs> I'm serious. Doesn't even make sense. Doesn't even make sense. I get it. If you do that, that's a mark. It doesn't make sense to that American. He or she is not going towards Islam because he or she fears going to hell. Not all converts are like that. I'm just saying a lot of times 
they are going towards the religion of Islam because they like it. They like the one God concept. They like that they can pray to God five times a day. They like the charity. They like the fasting. They like it. Not because it's do it or else. Not all, not all, but a lot. You have to understand who an American is in order to keep them in Islam. And you have to understand who that specific American is in regards to their background. If they are a Christian in any way, you have to know what you're dealing with. Anyways. You would have to write a book on it, honestly. 20 minutes and some... 21 minutes. I had to wait until 21 minutes. It isn't going to capture all the little pieces that make up an individual who comes into Islam as a convert. I guess you could just boil it down to treat a convert as an individual. Not like all converts, just get to know that individual. Really get to know that individual. That's why I shared the story about being in a cult. It was only probably 10 months of my life, but it was a big deal. And it is part of why I think the way I think today. No matter what happens, it was a big part of my life. And we judge individual converts based on them not accepting what the masses are doing. How dare you not do that? Or how dare you not say that after you say this? You have to know what you're dealing with. I just thought about, does that make them a bad Muslim? No. It's who they are. It's who they are. And if you are that convert, like me, who has that background in Pentecostal Christianity, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. And maybe you grew up in a Pentecostal Christian church and you don't even connect to what I'm saying. That's possible. But I will say this. After all that, I'm going to sum it up to this. When a convert comes in, get to know the individual. Get to know the individual. And if you learn that that convert has a Christian background, just be careful on what you're throwing on that new Muslim in regards to telling them this scholar said this. Telling them this hadith says this. Telling them Prophet Muhammad did this. As a born and raised Muslim, that might not even make sense. And as a convert who's been into it for a while, that might not even make sense. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of American ex-Christians who may be going into Islam where that stuff is not making sense to them in the sense that they think, I just left a religion telling me to worship a prophet as God and now these people are telling me to follow this prophet. Oh. It's the truth. Again, not all Muslims, of course not all. But even if it's just one and you don't learn that Muslim's background, 
I don't know. Even if it helps one Muslim stay Muslim, it's worth it. Anyways, peace and love.